North Carolina, the Tar Heel State, played an important role for the Confederate States of America in the Civil War against the Union on both land and sea. On April 12, 1861, the Confederate Army would begin the Civil War by firing upon Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina, which was currently occupied by Union forces. Jefferson Davis, the President of the Confederate States, sparked what would be known as the bloodiest war in the entire history of the United States of America. Although many North Carolinians were opposed to the idea of secession from the Union, they would still fight alongside their fellow Southern countrymen. With the Union's Anaconda Plan being set in motion, coastal states, such as North Carolina, suffered heavily in terms of trade and occupation. Almost every port on the coast was blockaded with this plan, except for the port of Wilmington, alongside the southern coast of North Carolina. This port was protected by many coastal forts, the biggest being Fort Fisher, which was strategically placed between the Atlantic Ocean and the Cape Fear River. The port in Wilmington was a vital trade line for North Carolina and for Confederate troops to get very much needed supplies from European countries, most notably England. The Union's Anaconda Plan was partially bypassed through the use of Confederate blockade runners, which made Wilmington a large target for the Union forces. At the beginning of the Civil War, a large portion of the United States Navy remained loyal to the Union forces, but many ships were outdated and needed to be improved. Although both sides eventually had access to ironclad warships, the Union's Navy would dominate the sea through its sheer number of ships. It was through this naval dominance that a future joint attack from both land and sea on Fort Fisher would be a possibility for the Union forces. Fort Fisher was an earthwork fort that was a powerful defensive complex and the strongest fortification within the Confederacy by the year of 1864. The fort lies on a peninsula that is just south of Wilmington, which ends at New Inlet, one of the two ways to enter the Cape Fear River. Fort Fisher, along with many other forts, would dominate the avenue to Wilmington and control all shipping through the New Inlet Channel. It was clear to the Union strategists that by capturing Fort Fisher, Union forces could have control over the entire region of southeastern North Carolina. Union General Grant decided to issue a joint attack on the fort, with Rear Admiral Porter and Major General Godfrey Witzel in charge of the assault. Since General Grant issued the order through Major General Benjamin Butler, Butler decided to take charge of the land operation, making General Witzel second in command. With 3,000 troops, Generals Butler and Witzel landed north of the fort and started scouting and probing the fort for any weaknesses with little naval bombardment support. Butler and Witzel concurred that this assault would be a, quote, butchery, unquote, considering the similar assaults they both experienced in the past. After assessing the situation, Butler decided to retreat from the offensive as the fort proved to be too fortified, a decision Admiral Porter heavily disagreed with. Grant was extremely disappointed by the failed joint attack, and one month later would assign Major General Alfred Terry to command the land forces. The major problems with the first battle, as stated by Grant, was that it lacked vigor and commitment from both the Navy and the Army forces. Admiral Porter looked to correct this with General Terry and developed a very strong working relationship with them to help create the synergy which was lacking in the previous operation. At 8 a.m. on January the 13th, Porter's ship began to bombard the fort as Terry's landing forces commenced this landing at 8.30 a.m. Terry would land north of the fort like last time and assess the situation of attack while defending both his front and rear flank as the Confederate forces were nearby. On January the 14th, Terry looked to establish a good stronghold on the fort. He would return to Porter's ship briefly to consult him on attack plans for the next day. Both Porter and Terry came to a complete understanding that an all-out naval bombardment would commence the next morning until the land assault was ready. At 11 a.m. on January the 15th, Porter's fleet started the bombardment, which lasted until 3 p.m. when Terry signaled Porter to shift the bombardment to new targets. This bombardment by Porter created the chaos and confusion that Terry needed in order to initiate
initiate his two-pronged attack against the northern wall of the fort. The two-pronged attack assaulted the left and right halves of the north wall in order to penetrate the fort and gain an entryway. The forces assaulting the left half, led by Lieutenant Commander Kidder Breeze, failed to penetrate the fort, but would assist Terry and the right half in succeeding. Terry pressed the attack, and by 6 p.m. he entered and captured the fort. Once Fort Fisher was under the Union control, the entire region would soon come with it in time.